To get an immigrant visa, also known as a green card or legal permanent residence, applicants must travel to a consular office for an in-person interview. This critical step is common practice in many nations. In others, applicants may have to travel a long distance to another consulate. In some cases, the U.S. does not process immigrant visas at all, forcing applicants to get authorization to go to a third nation for processing. If you are interested in any of these topics, stay tuned to the end of this video for your immigration updates. If you like this video, please click the subscribe button, like this video button, and click the bell icon to get new updates instantly directly to your YouTube homepage on your smartphone or smart device. No consulate available. The lack of processing is not a result of COVID-19 closures, but simply a policy choice on the part of the U.S. Department of State. In 2022, the State Department is indefinitely offering no routine immigrant visa processing in 67 countries, where about 720 million people reside. The main alternate processing locations for these countries were an average of 669 miles away. Over the last decade, the State Department has issued over 400,000 immigrant visas to people from these countries. It almost certainly would have issued many more if not for the significant hurdle. The list of countries without an immigrant visa processing consulate is based on the list of nationalities that the United States recognizes for purposes of processing non-immigrant or temporary visas. The countries without routine processing are due to the following reasons. 1. No consulate available. In 24 countries, about 36% of those without immigrant visa processing, the country simply does not have a consulate or embassy. Though this doesn't always mean that there are no U.S. consular affairs officials in these countries, the lack of a consulate means that there is no opportunity to apply for visas. The two largest countries in this group are North Korea and the state of Palestine, where the United States has no diplomatic ties. The rest are small states and island nations, the largest of which is Comoros with nearly 900,000 residents. 2. Closed consulates. In another 12 countries, 18% of cases, the State Department has closed the consulates. These are permanent or indefinite closures not related to COVID-19. The earliest such closure was in Iran in 1979, and although other Western countries like the United Kingdom do process visas there, the United States has made no attempt to revisit this decision in over four decades. In 2019, the State Department closed its consulate in Venezuela to demonstrate political opposition to its government. Most recently, the United States shuttered embassies in Ukraine, Belarus, and Russia, even though there is no fighting occurring in the latter two nations. 3. Non-immigrant only. In another 28 countries, about 42% of cases, there is actually a consulate. But it only processes non-immigrant or temporary visas to the United States it will not handle immigrant visas. In one way, this makes sense because non-immigrant visas are much more common than immigrant visas. But it is also difficult to justify excluding such a small percentage of applicants when immigrants typically have much closer connections to the United States. The State Department should make immigrant visa services immediately available at these locations. 4. Almost no visas or no visas. The final three embassies, 4% without routine immigrant visa processing, offer no visas at all. Central African Republic and very limited non-immigrant visa processing. Timor-Leste and South Sudan. In many cases, the alternate locations aren't even en route to the United States, creating much longer trips than the raw mileage would indicate. But as attorney Amy Wu Kaku points out, the lack of visa processing in country is more than a matter of just distance. For example, not only do Iranians need to leave Iran for the visa interview, they also need to leave their home country for other elements of the immigrant visa process, such as medical screening, making distance even more costly. Other complications can arise when it is difficult to enter the alternate locations. For instance, Yemenis are required to be processed in Egypt, but they need to obtain a visa to enter Egypt. Attorney Rafael Arena estimates that the lack of in-country processing can add tens of thousands of dollars for large Yemeni families. Palestinians also have difficulty getting visa processing in Jerusalem because of Israel's entry restrictions. The Solutions one solution to this problem would be for the United States to divorce visa issuing functions from whether it has diplomatic ties with that country. Another solution is for the State Department to make immigrant visa services immediately available at consulates that only process non-immigrant visas. Moreover, the State Department should conduct virtual interviews and allow immigrant visa applicants to interview at consulates that are currently non-immigrant only. Summary here is a depressing story about an Iraqi family who obtained visas to go to Turkey for processing. 
but their Turkish visas expired before the State Department processed their U.S. visas. One Afghan told Ben Scamiso that he spent his life savings to be able to get a permit to travel to Pakistan. Some applicants, however, simply cannot travel to another embassy. The problem is there is no embassy in Afghanistan. Army Captain Jeff Tremel told NBC about why he has been unable to obtain an immigrant visa for his Afghan interpreter. Tremel said he was frustrated with the refusal to do remote interviews electronically. The requirement to interview at a U.S. embassy or consulate is one of the requirements that rarely makes it into a summary of U.S. immigration law. But it is important, and it can be very challenging in some circumstances. The State Department should conduct virtual interviews and allow immigrant visa applicants to interview at consulates that are currently non-immigrant only. Immigrating to the United States can be made much easier without congressional action, and this administration should not miss its opportunity to deliver. That's all we have for you in this bulletin. I hope you found this video useful. We will post new videos when there are more updates. The U.S. Immigration Update Channel provides all necessary visa information and procedures for your U.S. immigration journey. It is important to understand the United States immigration processing steps, these application requirements, processing times, forms, fees and more. We will continue to provide all information about U.S. visitor visas such as B-1 and B-2, work visas such as L-1A, L-1B, H-1B, student visas, green cards, immigrant visas, EB-1, EB-2, EB-3, EB-4, EB-5, and family immigrant visas. Thank you for visiting us today and see you in the next video. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please subscribe to our channel for more U.S. immigration update videos.